Let me just tell you this, Richard spraying anything that'll stand still in this anything kitchen, get, right? Get you just get it all ready. It's happening. <laughs> These recipes call for it. Hello again. Thanks for spending part of your Monday here with us. I'm Jessica and all we jump right into the Virginia This Morning kitchen that's well doused with flavor already. Yeah, the it's smells are great. It's an infused dish that everybody could try out at home and it's perfect for this. You're inspired. It's perfect for this time of year, Richard. It really is. I mean, falls here and again, you know, fresh seasonal dining at Bonefish is kind of how we do things and it's important for us to kind of follow those trends, especially with fresh seafood. So we have a lot of great dishes out here today from our swordfish to a snapper, but we also have salmon and we talked about that a little bit last time. Today we have Norwegian salmon, um, which is a great product, definitely something that your viewers want to go and look at because as far as sustainability and health, there's a lot of great information out there about it. But what we're going to do is we're going to actually cedar plank smoke these. Um, and you can do this at home. It's not so just was, a restaurant thing. I was going to say, it sounds complicated, Richard, but okay, show us how it's yeah, done. Yeah, it's really not. So we're going to start with a beautiful piece of salmon like we always do, but I wanted to kind of show you where we were at as far as cedar planks. You can buy these at any of your local markets. Um, these days it's, you know, very culinarily driven now mm -hmm. and there's great stuff. So we have those. Um, this is one that has already been kind of pre-torched and treated. And when you're working with your salmon at home and you want to do this at home, there's a couple different ways to do it. We're going to show the viewers a way we can do it here in the kitchen and, and, and at their home. So what you're going to really want to do with it all is you're going to get it started. Now we have saute pan here, so we're going to be taking this salmon, we're going to get it rolling in this pan Yum. while we're talking. But we want to also treat these. So what you want to do is you want to soak these a lot in water, maybe even 24 hours, to really get it a, a good soak in it because it's going to get cooked. Mm -hmm. And you also want that steam to come out and that convection and that steam is going to go straight Brings in and out through the that flavor. salmon. It is. So what we want to do is after it's been soaked, we're gonna go ahead and spray it down okay. and we're gonna get a little uh, border of oil on there. And we don't want too much because you wanna get that smoke to go through and that oil can create a barrier. But we're gonna go ahead and get this rolling a little bit. But while this is cooking and this is soaking, we're gonna make the glaze for it as well. Okay. Yep, so to make the glaze is simple, you're gonna add maple syrup. And I this, the good thing about this is it's equal parts. So when you're at home, you do whatever you want. I mean, you can make as little or as much as you want. We also have some balsamic glaze, which you can make at home or buy, but you can make it at home just by cooking it down. Everybody has soy sauce, mm -hmm. right? And then we These have a little, we do. yeah, a little bit of canola oil. Yeah, so far nothing has stumped me. Nothing's in the crazy, yet. right? And then we're just going to put in a small amount of Dijon mustard, right? I'd be okay if I had some mega whole grain. Yeah, there you go. And you know what? You can do that, and that's the beautiful thing. And if you notice to my left is um, a whole bunch of different bourbons and, and beverages there. Mm -hmm. Oh, and, I, didn't, I didn't miss those. And the very last thing we're going to add in is a bourbon and quite wow. a bit of it. And, this has uh, got a lot of <laughs> strong flavor, Richard. It does, but it really stands up to the smoking. You? I would love for you to whisk for me, absolutely. So we're going to whisk all those ingredients together and bring them together for the glaze. Um, and then when this fish has got a little bit of color to it, which I believe it has right now. And yep. I know you, I noticed you've taken the skin off. It's skinless. Yeah, and again, you don't want to create too many barriers. You really want this product to kind of transfer from the smoke into the fish. Mm -hmm. So we don't have any skin there on that. So that was a great observation and a good thing to remember when you're at home. So we're going to put a little bit of color on there and then we have this here. And then again, we don't want to cook it too much because that also creates another barrier. And this is such a soft, supple fish. Right. You're then, just giving it the introduction to some heat there. That you, was the you goal, You really right? are, yeah, okay. absolutely. And then what you can do is you can go ahead and put it right on your cedar plank. Mm -hmm. And then before it goes in the oven, you want to just hit that. Did I emulsify? You did a great job. This the, look at us. Look at that. It was, it was just amazing. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. <laughs> amazing. No laughing. Come on. It's all fun and for love. It is all fun and right? games. Right? So you glaze that up a little bit, and mm -hmm. then this is going to go directly into your oven. That's just on the plank? Well, two ways. You can put this into a little pan. You can put a touch of water in the bottom of it, put a lot of Reynolds wrap on it so that there's a convection, mm -hmm. and put that into your oven just like this on there in that pan. Okay. Or if you have a grill and you want to go fast, you could take it just as it is and put it out there. And when you're going to see that it's going to kind of get some coloration when it's on a grill like this one, um, which is fine. You want that kind of rich smokiness to get in there. But here's where it would be super, du super duper important to have soaked it because otherwise that thing's going to go up like a Roman candle. And absolutely. It just lights like a match. Okay. So we don't want that. And then uh, when that comes out, we obviously can move it right over to here. And then that's it. The presentation, how sophisticated, yep. right yeah. on the plank there. Right. And it's great for your home, but it's also it looks like a restaurant 
item in your house. So Absolutely. a great thing, and then that's how we do it at the, at the restaurant. So all that smoke, you're gonna smell that when you're at the restaurant going. It's really a popular dish right now, and you'll see that we're serving it with great carrots. We have some tricolor carrots on there, which is also very seasonal right now and appropriate. Mm -hmm. And then next to that, to the left, we have um, our lobster stuffed shrimp. We also have oh, coming out wow. soon a lobster dip. Oh boy. So get ready for that, because it's out of this world. Guests love it. It's, it's something we tested heavily, and it's it really the time well. of year where you can you can be a little heavier with things that flavor and and everything comes together. So lobster dip would be the ticket. It's fantastic, and right? Some other great items too. Another fish and some ravioli. Yep, we have a pumpkin ravioli mm. there, and that's topped with a great vegetable compound butter, but also as you see feta, and that feta plays so well with that sweet. So you have that bite and you have that sweet. It goes really well together, and then swordfish, which is almost like a steak. Oof, love it. Now, Richard, you brought a lot of goodies over here, and we put some of the, the bourbon into the recipe. <laughs> we did. Are you complimenting this particular dish with a drink? We are. Um, glad you asked. We are looking at a fall apple martini. Ooh. Yeah, we have a great fall apple martini. We also have a wonderful pear martini, which you're going to be able to try as well. Um, but to do the fall Thanks. martini is fairly simple. We're going to go ahead and pack, you know what, we're going to pour this in here. And we're gonna go ahead and get. He's got a secret a yeti of, of ice. ice back here, just yeah, so everybody knows. It's pretty great. It's a bonefish I'm kinda, yeti too. I'm kind of hoping he forgets it. To I, be honest, might, it might happen. It could happen. It could happen. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add obviously an apple infused martini that we make in the restaurant. All right. That's really important these days. Everybody's looking for that local, handcrafted, made right there recipe. Yep. And at Bonefish, as you know, our, we're always doing fresh homemade infused alcohols all the time. Um, a lot of people will use those pre-made ones, but we really don't do that. And then I just put in a one count of our uh, honey syrup. We mm. also make our own syrups, and this is just a real quick hit. You know, I'll give it a little more apple juice. Okay. And it's then, early, Richard. You, you want me to stay upright for the rest of the, uh, uh, the well, morning. <laughs> and then we're gonna throw in a ginger liqueur, which we have right down here. And Again, with the ginger liqueur, you can, you can use ginger liqueur. You can use um, even a sugared candy ginger and macerate that up, mash it up, even put it right into this glass like this and then kind of shake that up I and guess, it'll break up while you're making it. I don't think I've gotten out much because you've just redefined my world with this ginger liqueur. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. You know, it's, you're going to find a lot of those great things, again, at Bonefish because we, we really do love to come up with some new things and find those liqueurs that are out there and those liquors that are out there that you just don't get everywhere else. We have so, like 15 seconds left, oh, well just enough to time to finish that, that with again fresh. We got some cinnamon here Ooh, that la, we're going to use on a microplane and just give it just a touch. Can and I give voila. a word to the wise? Make sure you've done your microplaning before you have one of these delicious cocktails because I don't think it gets any easier later after you've had one, right? Oh, no, no, it gets no. a little bit more difficult. Yeah, Everything a little, little trickier. Notice how I tasted the drink and yeah, not first. the recipe. No, that's important. You gotta know where to start and where Ooh. to finish. Mm. We can start and finish with this one, Richard. That's thanks it. so much for being Thank back you. with us. It's I appreciate always great it. to be here. Thank